Hey, welcome back to Garbro's Field Desk. I have for you Chapter 4 of a Voppengeist tale, Second Hand. This story's for adults. The story's 18 plus. I have followed every guideline to make sure a wee little child cannot find this video, but if you are a wee little child, turn the fuck around. The story's not for you. Go play a, a video game or something. This is a story for you. And due to this, YouTube gives me no money for these videos, despite the fact you're probably gonna see ads if you ain't got an ad blocker. However, the story is being funded through coffee and donations, so if you would like to keep this story going and all the sexy times rolling, stop by the coffee and give what you can to the main goal. Anywho, let's get this ball of wax rolling down these stairs. Chapter 4 Bleeding of Memories Anon woke up, holding his head with a grunt of pain as sunlight lit across his eyes again. He had started another movie with the Sig when they got back home, a light-hearted comedy called Stripes, and she had produced a bottle of alcohol to share with him. It was something brown she mixed with Dr. Pfeffer, and it had gone down extremely easy. After that, the entire night had been a blur. Why is my chest so cold? Anon murmured groggily to himself, placing a hand to his chest and feeling around for his pajama top. He hummed when he remembered he didn't do that anymore, apparently inside, blinking blearily down at himself. What he observed confused him for a minute, as he thought that somehow his hair had magically grown longer during the night, but the hand resting on his stomach was most certainly not. His. Nor, for that matter, was the hair, or the wash of breath tickling his ribcage. Anon froze like a deer caught in the headlights of a semi-truck and slowly tilted his head, looking down at the bed. The Sig was asleep beside him. Her hair sprawled across him in sleep-induced tangles, and she was completely naked, her ample breasts pressing against him. Anon swallowed as he felt her thick nipples pushing against his skin, dragging back and forth ever so slightly as she breathed, and the feeling set his own skin on fire. The hand resting on his stomach had a few of its fingers past his waistband, and Anon's dick lurched to life with vigor, ready for the insinuated prospect. Sick? Anon said in a hush down at the Waffengeist his heart beating so hard in his chest he could feel the artery in his neck keeping time. The Sig cracked open her own bleary eye, the faint traces of a hangover lingering on her eyelids. Mm? The fuck are you doing in here? Anon hissed down at her, and now another part of him was keeping time with the beat of his heart, something the Sig smiled at as she flexed the tips of her fingers through the soft forest of hair above Anon's throbbing morning wood. <sighs> Sleepin'? The Sig said with a sigh, running one of her legs along Anon's. Anon mastered himself, even when a part of him would rather not want to. Yes, but why in my room? You're the one who invited me in here. The Sig murmured, nuzzling her cheek against Anon's ribs as she pulled her knee up, thumping it against his morning wood. You get brave when you're drunk. Anon didn't remember doing anything last night except for drinking and watching the movie. Something to do with an RV that was a tank, and he sure as hell didn't remember inviting the Sig to bed with him. He didn't smell anything odd either, except for the natural perfume that seemed to emanate from the Sig's hair and skin. He looked around, quickly blinking the sleep from his eyes and spied a bunch of clothes in the corner of the room. Anon caught the faintest whiff of soda and alcohol from them, and his memory lunged back into gear. He remembered he had spilled almost a full cup of his drink when he bumped it with his knee, splashing both himself, the cig, and the couch. This resulted in him quickly cleaning off the couch with a liquid solution and a lot of water, which made the couch quite wet until it air dried. The alcohol must have filled him with false bravado, because he remembered offering to share his bed since he didn't want her to sleep on the floor, and the Sig, being nearly as drunk as he, had agreed. 
That still did not explain why the fuck she was naked, however. Why the hell are you naked? Anon said down at her, and she could have just worn his clothes again like she usually did. The Sig grumbled, annoyed that Anon kept talking to her when she was trying to sleep. You got my clothes all wet and I don't have any spares. Why didn't you just borrow mine? Anon chastised, pointing towards the dresser. The Sig smirked in annoyance. None of your stuff fits me. Besides... She wound her foot around the bottom of the blanket and sheet and extended her leg, dragging the blanket down to expose a large portion of her hips and the broad side of her ass cheek. Do you not like seeing me naked? Hmm? I need coffee! Anon burst out in a panic, whipping the blanket off of himself and pulling open the door, darting down the hallway to escape the Waffengeist in his bed. The Sig, pleased she finally had the bed to herself, curled back up in the blankets and sighed out happily, her lips curled in a smug smile. Anon ranged walked into the kitchen and fumbled for a mug with shaking hands, breathing in and out of his nose to quickly regain his composure. His pajama bottoms were rotated in the wrong direction and he fixed them, stuffing his aggravated morning wood back behind the button front as it bursted out, ready to take on the day. You little fucking asshole. Anon hissed at it, then turned to the espresso machine and gathered all the things he needed with lightning speed. When the shot was poured, the milk steamed, and the first sip of the morning passed his lips, Anon was finally able to calm down. Mind, it did take a while to fully calm down, more than half of his mug, but when the mug was washed in the sink, he had his entire head back under his control. Anon opened his phone, having snatched it up as he fled his bedroom, and saw it was 8 in the morning, then checked his banking. His paycheck had come in, and he looked back towards the bedroom, lowering his eyelids. No clothes, huh? Anon said, then started walking back towards his room, his face set. I'll show you no clothes, you little witch. Anon opened his door with all the authority he could muster kept his back to the bed, and grabbed at the clothes he needed before stomping back out, all without a word to or from the softly snoozing Sig. Anon put on his clothes, slipped on some flip-flops, then left his home in the care of the Sig, climbing into his little car and driving back out towards town. The story he had in mind was located down on Main Street, the name still a muddled cloud in his mind as he tried to remember it. Oh, it's a weird fucking German name. Waffe Rooster? Waffe and Coaster? Anon murmured to himself, eyes scanning back and forth to try and once again locate the store he had only driven by once before. He finally saw it. A big, burly store looking more like a shopping center. Ah, Waffen aus Rooster. Anon turned, quickly darting across traffic to the Waffen Rausmuster a clothing outfitter catering purely to Waffengeists. He parked, having to weave through and find one not set aside purely for veterans, then stepped through the double doors, the two panes of clean glass hissing apart to let him through. Inside was a small gaggle of women, two of which he knew were Waffengeists simply from how they stood, and one by her size. That is a huge woman. Anon said breathlessly to himself as he faltered to a stop at the sight of the six foot seven heavy machine gun of Offengeist. If Anon had thought the Sig was muscular, this heavy machine gun made him realize there were far more levels to the scale than he had first thought. She was a wide woman at the shoulders and hips, her muscles broad and powerful, and looked as if she had to push cars around for a workout or lift stones. Her face was harder than the Sig's, but her eyes were razor sharp and still wielded that unnatural beauty that all Waffengeist had. Her black hair was cut close and short, framing her bright yellow eyes in a way that read like a warning. Close to her side was an elderly man who looked as if he had possibly seen Vietnam or maybe even an older conflict, Anon couldn't tell. He wore the usual kind of eclectic clothes veterans of his age wore. Whatever the fuck he wanted in color code never being a rule to follow. The old man took notice of Anon and a few other shoppers who were standing politely to the side, then chuckled creakily, patting the muscled arm that was helping hold him upright as they walked. 
Ezra, sweetie, I think we're blocking the door. Why don't we move to the side so they can go shopping? Hmm? The hulking Waffengeist turned her head to bear down on Anon, and she shrugged the corner of her mouth, annoyed. We don't have to move for this gunling. He doesn't even have the scent of war on him. The old man just sighed, but patted her arm again. Come along, Ezra. We need to find you a new coat anyhow. Winter is coming, you know. The giant Waffengeist Ezra growled in her throat at Anon, peeved he was inconveniencing her shooter, but helped the old man along regardless as he walked forward, supporting him with sturdy arms. A female employee waved them both off, then turned sheepishly to Anon. Sorry about that. Ezra's getting crankier now that Elliot's getting older. How can I help you? Are you buying for your weapon? Anon watched the large woman go, still shocked at the absolute size of her compared to the five foot five man beside her, but quickly snapped out of it, turning to the employee. Oh, yeah, uh, my Sig needs clothes. Her face broke into a smile. A Sig, huh? Lucky you. Rifle? Pistol? Pistol. Anon said, looking over her shoulder at all the gear arranged around the store. Ah, yeah. Right over here. She said, then motioned for Anon to follow. He did, quickly stepping up beside her as she gestured to the clothing. These are all formulated with Waffenzau Berry. It's a kind of magic or whatever that help create the Waffengeists. They can wear these clothes and they remain on them, even when zipping back and forth between their forms. Quite handy, as no one wants a naked Waffengeist running around if something kicks up. She said, pointing her finger towards racks of clothing designed for any and all situations and events. Yeah, <laughs> who would want that, right? Anon laughed, nervously. The employee gave him a sideways, humor-filled glance as she knew just who wouldn't mind seeing a naked Waffengeist. Anon tucked his hands into his pockets, clearing his throat. <clears throat> anyway? Anyway? She began, gesturing towards the many double racks. We have everything from daily wear, dresses, winter wear, boots, socks, underwear, bras, everything a wife and guys would need. Oh, hold on. You do have the full female variant, right? Anon stopped, looking confused. I thought they only came in female. The woman scratched at her neck with a finger, opening her mouth as she thought for the right words. Well, yes, but there are some who adapt for female shooters. Thanks to the magic within them, and the contract. Now, these are a little more rare. Maybe one in 3,000, but they're able to shift things around when needed. She pulled out her phone, quickly googling an image as they both stepped near a rack of sundresses. Anon looked down at her phone as the image came into view. That's a woman. Yes, but actually, <laughs> no. The employee said with a dark chuckle. Scrolling through the search results until one wearing a bathing suit came into view. Oh, yep, that's... different. Anon said with a bizarre expression on his face, squinting down at the picture. And female shooters prefer these for... Uh, well, I can see why they would prefer them. The employee shrugged. Some women want them, some women don't. Of course, the last thing we needed was another monkey wrench thrown into the engine bay of this weird-ass machine, but... Here we are anyway. Do you think you have it from here? Oh yeah, I think I can figure this bit out. Nothing hard about buying clothes. Simple process, right? Anon said, and the employee departed with a wave of her hand, though she did have a he screwed look on her face as she left. Anon turned towards the racks and blew air out past his lips, looking up and around at the racks of pants, skirts, shirts, and uniforms that were laid out in a logical manner as well as tagged with general topics such as daywear and formal. I doubt she wants formal. Anon said to himself, walking along the racks with his hands on his hips, then squinted at a sign reading it aloud. Remember to buy your Waffengeist socks. If they do not have Waffenzauberi, they will not stay after the change. Anon blinked at the sign, having completely forgotten the Sig needed socks altogether. Good to know. He looked back around to the racks of clothing and started using his best judgment, pulling down what he believed to be her sizes in t-shirts, pants, hoodies, and shorts. 
Anon collected roughly ten outfits before another realization dawned on him, and he looked down at the pile of clothes. Wait, if socks won't even stay, that means I need to get her underwear and stuff. He pushed his cart out the end of the aisle he was in and looked around, spotting a sign that said delicates in a curvy, flirting font. Ah, the boss of the level. Anon said to himself, poking his head into the aisle and looking around. Unlike the other aisles, this one was far more severe in its layout, despite what was on the shelves and racks. Bras and sports bras were hung from specialized hangers, while below them were sheets of writing with bullet points denoting certain things they did. The underwear was laid out in the same fashion, with the same pages of paper laying beside them on their clear case holders. For some reason it felt weird as he walked into the aisle, Less for what was inside it and more for the overall vibe that was coming off of the shelves. Unlike the rest of the store, he felt like he was in a place of power. And all the sounds outside the aisle were muffled, as if he had been locked away from everyone else in a little room. Anon looked down at a nearby pair of tanga underwear, sporting a splash of color that reminded him of splatter art. Cold weather operations tanga. Anon said, leaning in more towards the paper. Level 2 grade 4... Schritten... Comp... From, what is with all this German? Anon sighed out in frustration, skipping past a phrase. Ah, uh, We'll keep frost off of your Waffengeist and keep oils from seizing during combat operations in cold weather. Huh. Anon murmured, moving down the aisle towards a pair of bikini underwear. These ones sporting the decal of a Bradley APC riding on a surfboard along the back. Tropic Lightning Saltwater Bikini, level 3 grade... Fuck, I have to learn this probably. Fort G... Schritten... Kampfmagi? Kampfmagi? Anon said to himself as he cocked his head, pulling out his Wojak phone and bringing up the translation program. Anon typed the whole word into this program and it chirped at him when it figured out the best phrase that matched. Advanced combat magic? Anon said, then held out his fingers, counting out the phrase, then turned to the German word. Advanced combat magic, fortgeschritten kampfmagi. Fucking hell, why not just use the English word? Anon sighed, then moved down to a pair of boy shorts, though this had a far larger rack of different colors than the others. <sighs> Let's see, daily operations boy shorts, level 6 grade, yada yada yada, yada yada yada, keeps your Waffengeist in tip top shape and wards away sweat from daily carry, as well as dirt and grime. Huh. Anon looked up at the many different colors and themes, then back down to the price tag. Well, I can afford a few of these. May as well give her some variety. Starting with a pair of sunflower themed ones and a basic blue pair, Anon set them down in the cart and picked out a few others before turning towards the bras, though these seemed nearly as complicated as the underwear. My gosh, these have even more comp magi. Anon said, though to him, magi seemed a terribly underwhelming word. Expensive as hell, too. The most expensive was a combat-ready full-bus corset, available in only black, gray, and olive drab, and it had molly webbing around it just under the cups. Anon whistled at the $800 price tag, leaning forward to read the paper. Battle Mistress Combat Corset, Level 1 Grade Kampf McGee. This combat corset keeps your Waffengeist sharp for battle and can keep going on the barest amount of food. This corset fortifies your Waffengeist to even shrug off minor wounds, keep her accuracy at long and short ranges, as well as be able to see in the dark when not in weapon form- HOLY SHIT IT CAN MAKE THEM SEE IN THE DARK?! Anon guffawed at the corset, looking up and down at it, then the paper. How the hell does it allow them to see in the dark? Because it alters our sight. Anon turned towards the voice to see a woman with short blonde hair standing next to his cart her almond green eyes watching him with both curiosity and suspicion. Oh, thank you. Buying your guys something nice, I take it? The Waffen guy said, walking by Anon towards a rack of t-shirt bras. Anon could feel a static energy creep by him as she walked by, and she smelled way different than the cig. Instead of that spice cider scent that he normally smelled from the cig, she smelled of oak, honey, flowers, and trees. 
If you're not sure what to get, just get her some of these level sixes. The Waffen guy said, gesturing towards a rack near her as she plucked a lacy number for herself. They're great for daily wear and can help reduce issues of going into battery. Anam blinked, his mind still trying to figure out just what he was talking to. Oh, g going into battery, right. Here. She said, picking one of the level sixes from the rack and handing it towards him. I can smell a pistol on you, so this will do. These things can change up and down a little ways in terms of fitting your cup, but some of us need larger ones. Like that massive machine gun that was walking around. Anon remembered the massive woman, and he found his mind drifting out of curiosity. They, uh, need stronger bras, eh? Mm-hmm. The Waffen guys murmured in agreement, reading the paper attached to her own bra selection. Makes them stronger and less likely to break down. I myself am heading out into the forest for a week of training, and this little number will keep the bugs away. They can repel bugs as well? Anon asked her, looking down at the one she handed him, though it had no mention of bugs on the tag. The Waffen guys turned to him and smirked. You really are new to this, huh? A little, yeah. Anon said, then remembered he wasn't wearing his old shoes, and the Waffen guys couldn't smell the California on him. If you don't mind me asking, uh, what are you? The Waffen guys chuckled to herself, tucking the bra at his hanger under her arm. Rather for it to ask a geist in such a rude way. There's a procedure? Anon said with a panic, holding up his hands. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I, that was terribly rude, wasn't it? The Waffen guys laughed kindly. A little bit, yes, but I'll let it slide this time. Anon groaned and leaned against his cart, rubbing his hand down his face. Ah, <sighs> oh good. I am a CZ Bren 3C. Liliana is my designation. The Waffen guy said, tilting forward in a slight, polite bow. It is good to meet you. Anon got off his cart and bowed forward as well, though more awkwardly than Liliana. It's good to meet you. I'm Anon. CZ, does that mean you're Czech? I'm of Czech design, but I was made and bound stateside. If you ever meet one of my sisters, they'll likely have an accent, unlike me. Liliana said with a smile, then looked down at her watch. Ah. Uh, I must be going. My shooter will be back for me soon. Have a good day, Anon. Anon turned as she brushed by him, then watched her go, tilting his head at Liliana as she left the aisle. CZ Bren. Anon murmured to himself, then turned towards the rack. He went for the safe route and got two of the lower grade t-shirt bras, plopping them on top of the other clothes and then deciding that would be enough wallet ravaging for one month. That was until he walked past an aisle of dresses and decided a peek wouldn't hurt. The woman that checked him out at the register was the same that had shown him the aisles, and she made small talk with him as she checked him out, and kept making odd suggestions for other types of clothes that were more for show than anything else. Anon, however, could not be swayed to pay any more money than the damage already on the display, despite some of the other employees giving him odd looks. By the time Anon left the shop, he was $600 poorer, but several days worth of outfits richer, including a lovely yellow sundress with floral trim. He wasn't sure why, but he just kind of felt that the Sig would like something like this. With all the bags shoved into the passenger seat, Anon raced home, opening the door quietly and tiptoeing into his house as silently as the paper bags would allow. He peeped past the hallway, saw that the Sig was still asleep in his bed, then quickly set to washing the coffee table. After it was cleared of any sticky drink residue and dried with a towel, he started laying out her clothes. Anon started talking to himself as he laid out the articles of clothing one by one. Seven graphic t-shirts of what looks like gun parts and camping gear, three pairs of jeans, three pairs of shorts, a skirt, a nice dress, I'll set that on the couch here, eight pairs of... Anon blinked, holding up a particular article of clothing he knew he did not buy. He turned it back and forth in his hands, trying to figure out how the lacy, nearly see-through red T-string had gotten into his bag. What the fuck is this? I didn't buy this! Anon said in embarrassment, tossing them down into the bag. He looked down at the eight pairs of comfortable underwear, the same boy short design she already wore, then to this ninth pair of mystery lingerie down in the bag. He quickly rummaged around inside the bag and found a note that had been stashed there. On the little note, a message was written, one that made Anon roll his eyes. 
always remember to get her something nice. At the bottom, the employee from before had signed her name, a heart surrounding her signature. Why the fuck would you give me this? How did you even slip it into the bag? Anon hissed, quickly turning back and forth on his feet to figure out a place to stash the thong. Panic gripped at him. What would the Sig think if she saw him buying this kind of stuff for her? Would she get mad? Would she hit him? Ah, uh, fuck, I gotta hide this thing. Anam breathed out, then sped past his bedroom, opening up a hallway closet and quickly stuffing it into a corner near the top shelf where his old sleeping bag was. Anon? The Sig murmured, and Anon heard his blanket rustling. Anon spun around and slammed the door shut, sweat trickling down his cheek. Hey, yeah, it's me. Did you leave? The Sig asked, and he heard her stir on his bed, the sound of blankets falling to the side, casting mental images into his already spinning mind. Yeah, I needed to, uh, run an errand. Payday, you know, gotta pay bills and all that. Anon said, quickly stepping past his room towards the kitchen. Do you want a coffee? There was a long pause before the Sig spoke, the bed squeaking as she stood. Sure. Anon heard her pull open his dresser drawers and figured she was stealing his clothes again. He exhaled in relief when she walked out into the hallway wearing one of his t-shirts and a pair of his underwear, as he half expected her to walk out naked just to give him a heart attack. Anon's underwear were like shorts on her anyway, since he only wore boxers. She yawned widely and idly scratched at her stomach, causing her breasts to sway and Anon to keep sweating despite the chilly morning air. Very chilly, judging by the sig. Can you make me one of your things? Oh, I want to see what's on the news. The sig asked, yawning again as she leaned against the kitchen counter. Anon nodded, gesturing vaguely as he kept his eyes focused on the espresso maker. Of course, not a problem. She eyed him warily, raising a brow. Why are you acting so weird now? I'm not acting weird, I'm making coffee in a completely normal way. Anon said flatly, which, as he thought about it, was kind of a weird thing to say. Uh-huh. Back to the skittish Anon, are we? I have to get you liquored up more often. The Sig said, leaning off the counter and slinking towards the living room. Anon turned to look over his shoulder at her, and when she saw the coffee table, she actually shuddered in a breath, holding her hands to her mouth as she caught sight of the brand new clothes. What? Who? The Sig whispered, looking down at the array of clothing. Anon turned around smiling, feeling like a parent on Christmas morning seeing their kids find their presents. You said I ruined your clothes, so I got you more. The Sig didn't move for a moment, her hand still held to her lips as she stared wide-eyed at the clothing. Anon couldn't see her face, and he started to get a little worried as he clicked the porter filter into place. Sig? Are these... Waffenzauberei? The Sig asked, reaching down to touch the brand new pair of underwear. Anon could hear her choking up, and he was suddenly inwardly panicking that maybe he had bought the wrong clothing. Well, yes, they are. I thought that's what you guys wore. The employee said that- Anon said in a hurry, quickly coming around the kitchen into the living room, but his voice died away when he saw the look on the Sig's face. And you got all these. For me. The Sig said, turning to look at Anon with a warbling smile on her lips. You caught all these for me. Anon stood there, stupidly. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. The Sig said in a hushed tone, looking back down at the clothing. She reached down and touched the shirts, her fingers trembling over the enchanted cotton as she picked it up. It's not a big deal, Sig. I mean, my paycheck came in and I don't have a lot of bills, so... Anon said, turning and running back into the kitchen to stop the steam wand from cooking the milk. He bought me so many outfits. Normally we only get one or two. The Sig said happily, holding up the sundress. Oh, I love this. Is that why the cashiers were looking at me like I was weird? Anon thought to himself, remembering that the employees kept asking if he really wanted all these clothes at checkout. Though, the old man did beam at him when he walked by, giving Anon a thumbs up and a wink as his giant Waffengeist helped him out the door. Before Anon could reply, she crashed into him, her arms wrapping around his chest in a crushing bear hug. 
Sig, hold on. Anon gasped out as her muscular arms squeezed the air from his lungs, all the while he struggled to keep pouring the foamed milk into her mug. You're gonna make me spit- The Sig jerked Anon's head towards her with a strong hand, and he was silenced by her lips smashing against his, her gunmetal scented tears still trickling down her cheeks. She kissed him again and again until Anon was quite sure he had not bought too many clothes. This lasted for only a few heartbeats before she giggled with an excited yell and ran back towards the living room, holding up her new clothes and admiring them. Anon turned back towards his espresso machine, the sexual shell shock vibrating through his brain as he made the rest of the drink in a bit of a dazed state. The mental autopilot kicking into gear, aiding a fair measure. After he made both the Sig and himself a latte, Anon was treated to a little bit of a show with his breakfast as he sat on the couch. Of course, this was nothing out of the movies, no parade of panties or anything of that nonsense, but he did get to watch her pull on a few new outfits and hop around the house, enjoying the newfound freedom of having a choice to what she wore. She did a few odd things while trying on her clothes, such as jumping into the air and snapping into her pistol form. The sharp, ear-splitting crack caught him off guard the first time she did it, but he got used to it after the third time. When she did this, she would jump, crack into her pistol form, then crack out of it, landing onto the floor with a rolling giggle. His favorite was, of course, the sundress, and it clung to her in all the happy ways a sundress should. The Sig kept spinning around in a circle, flashbanging his brain with glimpses of her thighs and underwear, and he ended up having to clear his throat and avert his eyes to keep his heart rate down. To his disappointment, she changed back into her loungewear, plus one of her graphic t-shirts, and they both watched the news together, sipping at their lattes. While the first few minutes of surfing was the usual, such as the weather and local news, they came across a feed that was some kind of propaganda. A large military-type man was shouting at the screen while a stern-faced Waffen guy stood beside him, arms crossed and eyes hooded. Anon left to grab a pudding cup for the both of them, and he was still raging on the screen when he got back. What is he going on about? Anon asked, looking towards the Sig as he handed her one of the cups. The Sig smiled at Anon and took the cup pulling back the lid with her teeth. He's talking about the mutilations they do to their weapons on the coasts. While the more Christian states sees us as demons, the sanctuary states understand the power we have, except they don't take kindly to our opinions or free will. They want weapons that do their job. Nothing more, nothing less. The Sig said flatly, spooning pudding past her lips. Anon blinked, lightly tapping his spoon against his cup. You mean like the blinders? The Sig's face turned sour, and she looked away from the screen as the Waffengeist began to speak, an AR-14 Bravo that wielded a powerful, booming voice. It was never just the blinders, Flower Power. Those poor girls get broken down all the way to their very spirit. I have a feeling that none of those states like weapons at all. Or would just use non-bound versions, but we stomp their dicks in during the war. They know the power of a Geist, but want to control that power and keep it under heel. Guys have been fleeing across the borders any time they're able to get away, but more get caught. Why? Anon asked, now feeling slightly sick to his stomach. The Sig poked at her pudding, flicking her eyes up at the screen. Mm, to find proper shooters. It's a big enough part of us that we would risk being destroyed rather than languishing under a companionless existence. There's no connection between those weapons and their shooters, only commands. They're just used as tools, stuffed in the lockers when not in use. Some survivors speak of how they're not even allowed to talk or else they get their firing pin shattered and then replaced. Anon felt uncomfortable. He had been an anti-gun for decades in his youth and had swallowed the apparent lies with ease. Well, I'm sure it's not all that bad, right? The firing pin is like the heart of a weapon, so they break their hearts over and over again until they get what they want, silent obedience. It'd be like someone driving a spike into your chest then sewing the wound shut over and over. The Sig said as she spooned more pudding into her mouth, then cast a dire eye towards Anon. We are bound by the contract. To adhere ourselves to humanity and be their companions in war, life, 
and death. Living in a world where you're seen as nothing but a tool is akin to an unending psychological torture. Anon's mouth went dry somehow despite the pudding he was eating, his mind remembering the dead-eyed Waffengeist walking by their patrol officers. Well, like, aren't you guys immortal? Wouldn't you just outlive your captors? The Sig sniffed, scraping her spoon along the walls of her pudding cup. Technically, yes, but there are fates far worse than dying. If our receivers survive along with our bolts even remotely intact, so do we. There are thousands of geists still being found today on old battlefields, and many are taken to an anvil to be broken. They're too insane, driven mad by years alone in the dirt, sometimes even rotting next to their dead shooter with their bones all around them. Fucking hell. Anon muttered, the mental image burning its way into his brain like an arc welder. Then they're the ones who are so old that they can no longer take the strain. They're taken to an anvil and broken peacefully. You see, when we're broken properly, our souls are recycled, given time to rest. I've heard stories of weapons who break the rules in the big cities, then get their receivers dropped down wells to rot or cast off into dark places, never to be seen again. The Sig said, watching the Waffengeist on the screen rail about the other Waffengeist trapped in the cities. Anon sat there, dumbfounded, as he knew there were police in California who threw murderous Waffengeist down mine shafts, or just chucked him into the ocean to calcify on the seabed. But in all those times, he was told they simply died, or faded away over time. You guys are alive the entire time? Anon asked, looking up to the Waffengeist on the screen. The Sig nodded. The entire time. Once spoke to a Beretta that had been fished off of a reef by some scuba divers and smuggled into Nevada. She was a bit queer and had some odd tricks such as slapping at fish that weren't there, but she told me all kinds of stories. What all did she tell you? Anon asked, more out of morbid curiosity. The Sig pulled her spoon through her teeth, smacking her lips. One of her partners, a Glock of some sort, broke protocol and jammed her thumb into the eye of a criminal who was assaulting her officer. Instead of hailing her as a brave geist, they executed punitive measures because she hurt a human. They punished her for saving her officer. Anon asked, shocked. The Sig nodded. They broke her lower away from her slide and then tossed her upper assembly down into an oubliette under their courthouse as a judgment of her crimes. The Beretta was tossed into the sea because she broke loose of her locker to see her friend and for what she found. What she found? Anon asked, unease crawling into his nerves. The Sig took another scoop of her pudding, then looked at it, giving it a little wiggle on her spoon. Thousands of receivers and slides were down there. Thousands. Rotting on the ground and unable to change. When we're heavily damaged, we can't change, and all of them were screaming out to her via the bond we all share. She was stunned by the amount of them and was knocked unconscious by the mental whiplash, and she was found the next morning. The Sig put the spoon in her mouth, cleaning the pudding away with her lips as she pulled it free. They threw her into the ocean so she couldn't escape and share their secret. But why would they just throw them in there like that? I mean, I never thought much of them, but... You seem to feel enough, more than a chicken or a cow, and those are heavily protected by California. Anon said, horrified at the very thought of thousands of sentient beings languishing in the dark. As punishment, Anon. Punishment for daring not to act like the tools they want us to be. In the end, we are weapons and we're good at what we do. The Sig said sadly, setting down her pudding cup. When guys aren't running the border, fleeing from homes, police stations, or armories, there are infiltrators that sneak into these places of punishment and steal receivers, bringing them back into the Midwest. Anon's brain sparked with a memory, and he snapped his fingers. The terrorists! The what? The Sig said coldly, catching Anon with a malicious side eye. Anon held up a hand. Not what I call them, what the news called them. They were painted as terrorists, stealing murderous Waffengeist to set loose against the sanctuary states. Uh. The Sig said, though her eyebrows were still pinched together in annoyance. One man's freedom fighter is another's terrorist. Same old adage. Your news stations weren't completely wrong, though. Anon raised his brows. They weren't wrong? A lot of the rescued guys make sure they fall into the hands of rogues, mercenary bands, and gangs that prey on the sanctuary states. 
This is their version of revenge, such as the Gunslinger Girls and the Black Powder Rangers. The Sig said, finishing off the last bite of her pudding cup and setting the empty container on the coffee table. The ones that can't cope are released on an anvil and sent back into the arms of the mother to rest. Why can't they go off on their own? Anon asked, finishing his own cup as well and setting it down beside hers. Like the one I met at the store today. The Sig turned to look at him, her smile a little crooked with anger. You went and met another geist this morning? Anon read the warning on her face and cleared his throat nervously. <clears throat> no, no. I was shopping and she helped me understand what all the labels meant on the, uh, the, um... The what? The Sig asked with venom in her voice, and Anon could hear the ceramic mug in her hand straining under her grip. The armor, and, uh, the shoes. Shoes there had some odd papers on them, and I didn't know what they meant. Anon sputtered, gesturing down to the Sig's shoes by the couch. But I couldn't afford any. The Sig growled in her throat, and Anon saw her sniff the air a few times, her eyes narrowing. Uh-huh. Sure. Anyway, why can't they go off on their own and get revenge? I mean, the one geist attacked a human, right? Anon asked quickly, trying to take the conversation in another direction. The Sig turned away from Anon, setting down her mug. It's only because her shooter was in trouble. We're allowed to kill only when our shooter is in danger of dying. Other than that, we're not allowed via the contract. So you're allowed to hurt humans, but you can't kill them? Anon asked, actually curious now. The Sig shrugged. Well... Not deeply wound, really. Technically, we cannot kill a human, but there are always loopholes in contracts. Loopholes like what? Anon asked. Like this! The Sig shouted and whirled to tackle Anon as he screamed and tried to fend her off. What the fuck? Anon shouted as the Sig manhandled him, pinning his arms to the couch as she leaned down and sniffed him. After a few deep breaths, she growled in her throat again and widened her eyes. You were talking with a rifle? A fucking Czech battle rifle? I was just asking what the different clothes did! Anon shouted, yanking at his arms to try and get free. That's all, I swear! What was she buying? The Sig demanded, looking down at Anon with glowing honey brown eyes. A special bra! Anon shouted angrily, becoming quite frustrated that she could pin him down so easily. Ugh. The Sig said, letting go of Anon and leaning back on the couch, straddling his legs. Fucking modern geists and their need for fancy gear. <laughs> Appalling. The Sig looked down at Anon, annoyed, then leaned back, opening up her arms. Dead weight. What? Anon yelled out as a Sig flopped down onto him, going limp and smothering him with her breasts. Get off of me! Sorry, dead weight. The Sig murmured, chuckling to herself as Anon fought to get out from under her. How are you so heavy? Anon cried out, finally working his face towards her armpit and breathing in raggedly. The Sig pursed her lips. Well, that's quite rude, Anon. Before Anon could reply, the Sig popped her finger into her mouth, got it lacquered and saliva thickened by the consumption of sugar, then plugged it into Anon's ear. What the fuck is that? Anon wailed, now struggling in earnest to get out from under the Sig as she laughed and chuckled. The Sig, however, just continued to laugh as Anon kept up his struggle in futility, though he did manage to slip out from under her by squirming out onto the floor, landing with a wheezing thump onto the carpet while the Sig looked down at him from the couch, smiling and still giggling to herself. What the fuck is wrong with you? Anon panted out, looking up at the Sig with a glare. The Sig set her head down onto the side of the cushion, looking down at Anon with a flushed, happy face. Nothing. But I bet if you took me shooting, I would be a lot easier to deal with. I don't know anything about shooting. Anon sighed out, still trying to catch his breath. The Sig wiggled herself closer to the edge of the couch, looking down at Anon. You know that's our job, right? Show you the ropes? Get you comfortable with the idea? Anon eyed her warily, then sighed out in exasperation. <sighs> Where do we even go to do this whole shooting thing? And that's the end of chapter 4 of Second Hand of Often Guy's Tale. If you like the story and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel of Guard Bros Field Tests. 
join me on Twitter, join me on the Discord, join me on Coffee. Help support the channel by buying books and keychains and other such things, or just simply donating a dollar. Like, no joke, if you donate one dollar, that's like a hundred, I mean, that's probably like a thousand percent more than what YouTube fucking gives me. Also, as a secret, we'll be piling up with Fire Force Ventures here soon, and that's going to be an interesting time for all of us. Until we see you next time on this side of the veil, that was Danger, that was Simba, and this is Garbro's Field Desk. We'll see you next time.